Good morning. You're listening to WPVM LP in Asheville, North Carolina. Uh, 103.7 on the dial. And also on this special show, it's on via Facebook Live. This is the Blainswell Show, typically heard Wednesdays at 9 a.m. And you can also watch us, which you're doing right now, on the Facebook page. I'm your host, Blaine Greenfield, and we're here in my Zoom studio in lovely downtown Fairview, North Carolina. Each week we focus on the Asheville theater scene, as well as on positive news and information about people and organizations in both Western North Carolina and throughout the country. And to that end, it's my pleasure to introduce my guests for this special show, and they are uh, Doug Sabat and uh, Jared Schultz. Am I pronouncing it correctly, both names? Yep. Yep. Okay, great. And so, guys, you can wave to all your fans and friends in Facebook world. Okay, so if you're watching, you're meeting um, uh, Doug and uh, Jared. And we're going to be talking uh, today primarily about an upcoming show at HOT, which is called Nocturne. But before we do that, guys, what I typically like to do is find out a little bit about you. And so since this is the first time I've had the pleasure of interviewing uh, Jared on air, the question I, uh, I'd like to ask first is, uh, you grew up where? As a yeah, kid. I grew. Yeah, I grew up in uh, Sevierville, Tennessee. So okay. And when yeah. you growing up in Tennessee, did you always know you wanted to be an actor? Uh, yes, more or less. I was like, I remember, I was like, I think at a Shoney's telling my, uh, we had family friends that came from out of town, and they asked what I wanted to do, and I'm pretty sure I um, immediately just said, uh, I want to be on SNL Saturday Night Live, and after that, and that was around the tender age of nine, so. Um, after that, yeah, I kind of just like fostered the need for it. Um, I really got into it at high school is when I did my first play. Um, that was when the bug really bit me and then, you know, went to Catawba College um, and yeah, got my bachelor's there and then uh, yeah, came to Asheville probably about two years after graduation and just fell in love with the theater scene here and been doing it uh, uh, ever since. What was so. your first show? Oh, my first show um just in western north carolina like it, it, yeah. or even before then as a kid yeah. what, what oh my first, first oh my first on, show on I, stage yeah. uh first show on stage um was the man who came to dinner uh my sophomore year i got lumberg pittman high school and i was mets if anyone knows that play so the um uh bug uh enthusiast in that play um yeah. Because yeah. I mentioned that, uh, Jared, I have an idea. I don't know if I've shared it with Doug, but I want to do this fundraiser. And I've also shared it with Steve Lloyd and, and Candace at, at HOD. But I want everybody to do their very first play. You know, you don't have to do the whole play, but just like a five minute part of it. Like when you have that, the show you did, Jared, do they have mm -hmm. a, a videotape of it anywhere? Oh, <laughs> I hope not. Uh. No, but wouldn't that be <laughs> cool to have, though? You know, so you could show for the yeah. rest of your life. Here was my very first performance. Yeah. So keep that in mind, Doug. I just think that'd be a great fundraiser for everybody to come in for five, 10 minutes, you know, especially if they were a kid in a tree or something, you know, just the <laughs> very first thing. So we want to see that, we want to see that performance. And so Jared, then up from there, you did high school, you did college. And mm -hmm. then especially in the Asheville theater scene, I've seen you in a whole bunch of things. You do a lot of stuff in particular at Monford, is that correct? Yeah, yeah, Monford and uh, Magnetic are uh, two that I uh, probably hover around the most, I'd say. Yeah, so. and um, the other thing I, I so admire about you is not only your acting ability, but also um, your your ability with fight scenes. You know, you've become oh. like the, the expert in fight scenes in the Asheville area. <laughs> How'd you get into that? Well, that's uh, uh, very sweet. I Thank you, Blaine. Um, yeah, I've always, um, you know, loved knights and uh like martial arts and um you know the activities uh you know i was the kid that would you know pick up a stick and pretend it's excalibur and just like run around my yard and just like um act like i'm i'm fighting bandits and whatnot um so yeah but uh, uh as i got into college and the theater world opens up to you more i discovered that um yeah i was like there's whole uh, organizations that are devoted to teaching this safely and believably and like the SAFD, the Society of American Fight Directors. I, uh, I've gone to the Nationals, a couple of workshops through there. They're a great organization. Um, yeah, and I just, I, 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 one of the greatest quotes involving fight combat, I, 
or stage combat that I've heard is why do we fight? We fight because words fail. And that was kind of like what, um, uh, it's kind of like the, the mantra that goes through my, my head when I'm choreographing or I'm a fighter in a scene. It's like, you tried to talk things out. You tried to get to this point. And I was like, and then that's why we're here because I was like, there's an impasse. And then, and also just, um, yeah, fighting in general, I believe it, it's physical, it's raw, it's visceral, especially if it's done um, like right. It really tells a story. And as an actor, it's like, you know, our action basically to act is in the title of being an actor. And so, and you can't be more active when, than when you're fighting, basically. So. And another question on that, in terms of um, doing the choreography for fight scenes, which you've done, mm -hmm. a, I know a lot of, do you prefer doing the choreography or being in the fight scene? Oh, it's about a good 50, 50, I would say. So it depends on, um, yeah, they're, they're, both sides uh, uh, really appeal to me. So um, yeah, it kind of depends. And uh, also it depends on the weapon. So like an unarmed fight, I'm really happy to choreograph. I was like, I was happy to be a part of it. But if it's like a rapier dagger, or like a knife fight, I was like, I like to be a part of it because it just like feels really cool. So. <laughs> and that segues into uh, getting uh, Doug involved because one of the things you and I once talked about, um, I saw you at Montford, I think, and I said, boy, I'd love to see you actually direct you know, sometime, you know, a whole show from start to scratch. And you haven't done that uh, yet. Is that correct? I have not. No, uh, yes. I haven't. I haven't in delved into the directing uh, world yet. So. so I just think he'd be great in it, you know, and so oh, down the road in your spare time. But that leads right into Doug's um, uh, part of the interview here. And Doug, I know you're in th you're directing this um, first show at uh, the hot for, not the first show for the studio season, but your upcoming show, uh, Nocturne. And how did you get involved in directing? Um, I've always had an interest in directing. I started out doing acting um, in the, late in high school and then college and got a theater degree. Um, took a directing one class in college, but I mainly had focused on acting. Uh, and then as I got older and did more stuff, I, I really wanted to sort of branch out to, to directing. I started having just ideas that are more director thoughts in terms of like overall story and picture, you know, an actor lives in the moment from moment to moment. And when I was watching shows, um, I started analyzing them more as like an overall concept versus, you know, what the actor is doing. So it made me think like, Oh, maybe I should, maybe I should attempt directing because I seem to be, that's where my thoughts are leading right now. Um, which then I was, you know, aside from directing something in high school when I had no clue what I was doing. Um, and then, like a couple scenes in a directing class in college, I hadn't really done anything um, major until uh, through some playground injuries a couple of years ago um, at heart. Um, and, that, and that was kind of sort of the first big thing I directed and I, I really enjoyed it. Um, it was a really good process. Uh, <clears throat> and so that's that's kind of how I initially got involved uh, you know, I, th I think I first met you, you were doing a play at heart, but you were acting in it. Um, I'm trying to think what the play was. Um, it, yeah. Oh, when I first, because I first moved back to the area in 2018, um, and I was in the Bad Seed at heart. Um, okay, right, I, yeah. That was probably the first thing I was in there, and then I was in um, The Foreigner and and also uh, the musical Oliver in the ensemble. So the, the question I shared the same thing to you: Do you have a prefer preference now, directing or acting? Um, it it, it kind of depends. Um, I'm leaning more towards doing more directing stuff than acting um because I, I want I, I have less experience with that and i want to explore that a lot more um as far as acting goes though i still enjoy it i i prefer when it comes to acting more classical texts like i like a lot of shakespeare and Chekhov and things that are more classic um regarding acting it's stuff i'd like to direct as well but like if i'm gonna act i i, I feel more comfortable in those roles um than i do more modern roles there's something that just works for me in those um but I mean, I, I enjoy either one. Um, I think I'm just in a zone where I want to explore more directing right now. Uh, but it doesn't mean I'm giving up on acting. <laughs> because the nice thing about directing, of course, and we don't usually tell people the truth here, but you also have less memorization to do when you uh, direct. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, so that's, <laughs> you know, I, I would say a, a big plus. And let's take that to the show that's going, going to be uh, at hot this uh, winter season. And that's a show called Nocturne. 
Mm -hmm. And um, the first question is, uh, Doug, how do you find this uh, play? Did you choose it? Um, I did choose it. Um, this was a play I, my, my university actually had put on and I auditioned for. I did not get the role, um, but I, I, I became aware of it because of that. Um, and then two years ago when I did do some playground injuries before that play was even chosen, I was trying to find plays I was interested in directing and Nocturne was was the other one, um, basically, but, but it, Nocturne basically is a one person show. So it required me finding an actor that's capable of doing that and also willing to do that because um, it's a lot of work. And so um, at the time, wasn't finding anyone that was really <laughs> wanting to do it. Um, and thus um, I ended up doing gruesome, which I, I'm glad I did because it was really enjoyable. Uh, so uh, that's that's sort of how I became involved with the show, um, with with understanding Nocturne, um, and then uh, earlier uh, last year, uh, Candace contacted me to let me know there was still they had a, a couple studio spaces open and was it you know she, she said uh, you know I know you did gruesome you did really well with it do do you or you have something that you're interested in directing, and I was like oh well I have Nocturne um, but I but I got to find someone willing to. Uh, to, to do the part um and then i so i contacted uh, a jared and uh, i told him i said are you interested and he said he said yeah and i said okay cool i'm gonna i'm gonna send you the script or actually i think he, I think he purchased the script and i said i want you to read the script first before you agree to this because it's, it's a lot it's a lot of lines and it's also um pretty heavy material in parts so um but he did and he said he was game for it and and here we are <laughs> Now, I remember, too, I rest here off the air about other one-act plays that are uh, hard. They did uh, last year, it was brilliant, the George Burns thing. Um, mm -hmm. Pasquale uh, LaCourt, who's just fantastic in it. And that was a very impressive do one-person show, but it's a demanding. And mm -hmm. um, before we ask Jared his opinion of the, the show, uh, let me ask you for the Reader's Digest version of the show for folks who don't know it, including me. What's it about? Um, so... It is, it is basically, um, it's about a, a man who's just referred to as the son. Um, and it's basically about him dealing with a very tragic accident um, from when he was 17 years old. Um, I can have Jared give you the first line of the play in a second, which is also, I think, in the description. But um, it's sort of about what happened um, in the aftermath of that and sort of the grief from that and how he has attempted to move on and cope with that. Um, and as it goes on, um, he sort of gets a chance to reconnect with one of his family members, in this case, the father. Um, but a, a lot of it is just sort of, you know, this, this man who, you know, uh, is now basically in the present day would be 32 years old, just sort of, you know, reliving, not even reliving, but trying to analyze what happened and trying to move past it um, because time keeps moving forward. Uh, so that's, you know, it's, it's got some very heavy elements dealing with, with trauma um, and, and violence, but overall it is a play about moving on and healing. Um, so that's, that's kind of it in a nutshell um, in terms of theme. But there's no um, fight scenes though on this. So <laughs> no. There's no, no fight scenes. Um, no. <laughs> okay. So it's almost like, Jared Schultz, as you've never seen him before, or, you know, exactly. with, without any armor or something on. It'll, it'll, without it'll, swords, it'll... armor, weapons, any accoutrement, yeah. Okay. The, um, when you talk about the show, I want to put Jared on the spot then, and, and Doug kind of led you into it. So now do we know the first line? Yes. And okay. are you ready, Blaine? All okay, right. yeah. 15 years ago, I killed my sister. So a light comedy, we're, we're in for uh, uh, lots of laughs in this? Yes. Um, well, <laughs> uh, uh, we, 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 try, we try to find a few, but as Doug mentioned, yes, it's, it, it deals with um, a lot of drama, a lot of grief, um, a lot of heavier uh, concepts and um, of the story. But like, you know, tragedy and comedy are the same, uh, opposite sides of the same coin. There's some uh, lighter moments there. But um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a very heavy piece. It's why, um, uh, what kind of brought me to it in the first place? Um, you know, I'm a happy-go-lucky guy. So I was like, it's rare to step outside and do plays of this magnitude. And so just happy when Doug offered it to me. 
One of the things I like about it, Doug, is the fact, too, where I, I should check with you is how long is the, the play? Um, I believe it'll run about 70 to 80 minutes. Um, so it's okay. just it's just one like a long one act, basically. So it's funny, as I get older, I prefer shorter and one act, you know, with no intermissions, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> so you can kind of just get the whole thing and then you're out of there by a reasonable uh, time. Um, Doug, uh, excuse me, Jared, how was it for you doing, again, one man plays? Is this the first time you've ever done a one man play? It is, yeah. It's the first time I've ever did a one man play. So uh, not the first time I've ever been alone on stage, um, right. but uh, yes, it's the first time I've, uh, yeah, I've done a one man play. And in terms of dialogue, I wonder that, you know, if you're in with somebody else, you can read lines with somebody else here. Yeah. You know, you, you're doing the, the lines yourself. Is that harder for you or? or, or... It, it is, yeah, because, um, you know, well, it, it's when you're on stage with someone, I was like, you know, a key component of acting is listening. So even if like you, you know, you, you forget your line or God forbid it happens. Um, but it does sometimes, um, you also have a safety net of someone there. And if you're really listening, I was like, normally that's a good way to internalize the script because like, if you're, if you're just waiting for your line, waiting for their cue line to say your line, you're not really acting, you're not really participating. Um, but in a one man show, it's just all you, I was like, so, you know, it, it is. And, and the good thing about Nocturne is that it's very beautifully written. It's very poetic. Um, and there's moments that are just beautiful prose. So uh, sometimes that's pretty good fuel. I was like, cause you're like, you know, you're in this moment where you're just saying all these like beautiful words and these poetic images. And then sometimes it's as we're finding in rehearsal, sometimes it, it, it's just uh, <laughs> overloading to keep it all in your brain sometimes. And you have to, you know, call line every now and then. <laughs> Had you known the play before um, Doug sent it to you? Uh, no, um, actually, I heard like just being an actor collegially, I was like, Adam Rapp is a name that like we've heard, but I, I, yeah, I wasn't familiar with a lot of his work um, up until Doug, yeah, uh, presented it to me. And Doug, have you known any other stuff by the playwright or were you familiar with him? Um, I, I'm a little familiar with him. I have uh, not, I have actually a Nocturne in the collection with two other plays by him. Um, so I've read, I've read multiple things by him. Um, they're all very poetic. They all sort of deal with kind of this, um, human, a human tragedy of some sort that that's sort of where, at least, at least at the time he was writing these plays, that's sort of what his element was. So, um, you know, they all, they all are similar in that sense. Um, but he's, he's just, he's got a very beautiful way of writing. Talk about the process then in terms of putting on the show at Art so that uh, you told me, I think off the air, you've been in rehearsal now or, for a while. Uh, how long is the rehearsal process? And, and then what about bringing it to the actual uh, stage? So um, we've been in rehearsal for about a week. Um, it's a, we're just doing a really short rehearsal process. We, we did meet last year in the fall to just read through the play. Um, me, Jared and uh, Dakota Mann is our stage manager. Um, so we, we just read through the play and just threw out our initial ideas and discuss, discussions. Um, but we, we started rehearsals last week. We've gone through the whole play. Um, we've, we've worked some stuff and found some really good moments. Um, this coming week, we're basically going to be running through, working through the play. Um, we kind of, we should st go back. We worked through the play backwards. Now we're going to work through the play forwards. We're also going to be, um, we're adding more elements that we have in terms of props and, and um, scenic elements that we'll have um, for Jared to use to help create the space will be happening this coming week. And then um, our final our final week before we open, we'll be adding all the all the technical elements and stuff like that. Um, and for this show, we're using um, using a lot of sound, uh, a lot of sound cues and uh, hopefully a lot of projected images as well um, that will be used because uh, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, no. Um, because we're, we're, we're attempting to sort of create the, the, the mind of this character. When you step into this space, you're stepping into uh, the character's psyche, the character's mind. And so what you're seeing are sort of snapshots of things from his life. Now at Hot, there are actually three stages. You're doing this on which stage? We're doing this in the Fangmire, which is their, their new theater, their new big, uh, big black box style theater. Okay. 
So do you have a choice in terms of which theaters you like their best? Um, well, this was, um, Candace uh, told me this was, they were offering the Fang Meyer four studio shows this season, which in the past they normally do it in Feitcher studio, which is that small kind of green room space. Um, and when she told me they were allowing us to use the Fang Meyer, I was kind of like, oh, okay, then I think I want to do it in there because that has all updated equipment. And I think there's a lot of tech elements we can bring to, to really elevate this show, which are just unfortunately not accessible in the Feitcher. Um, so that's, that's sort of why I chose to do it in that space. You mentioned, which is kind of interesting, th these tech elements. Uh, just curious, what kinds of additional things will be working into the final week of rehearsals? Um, well, so I've got um, a lot of little sort of set pieces and um, uh, that we have to arrange. We've got, um, we're basically going to hang a, we have a scrim we're going to hang on the, on the back um, that we're going to um, show projected images of some of the things uh, the, our, the, our character Jared's playing the sun is talking about. Um, we have a lot of sort of sound effects to play throughout um, because a big part of this this play is sound. Um, something I don't think we did mention is this character um, was a piano player or piano prodigy when he was younger. Um, the name Nocturne itself partly right. comes from a musical Nocturne, um, but there's a, there's a lot of musical elements to it. So we, we have a lot of sound effects that we're gonna implement into it um, to just sort of, yeah, you know, elevate, elevate what we're seeing. Um, Cause it's, it's a, it's a beautifully written show, um, but there's so much more we can add to it to make it e even more so. So unfortunately though, uh, Jared, we won't get to see you play the piano in the show. No, and that turns out to be fairly fortunate. Uh, for <laughs> uh, yeah. Had you ever played the piano? Um, oh, Yes, uh, not not formal lessons, but um, yeah, there's a piano. When when I go back home at my uh, to see my family, my sister's house, she has one um, that largely uh, collects dust. Um, but uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I was like, I, I, I'm no way an accomplished pianist. So um. <laughs> now, now, talk about your preparation for the role. So you found out that you were going through the show a while ago. When mm -hmm. did you start getting into it, or start trying to you know memorize the script oh i mean it's it's been going um for a good while i was like so i'd say probably about um you know maybe two months before we started rehearsals um yeah is when uh we really started to like click uh because of course um you know we there was dead in denmark at that time and then holidays and so it's an interesting time to try to like learn lines and to um, uh, figure stuff out. So, but yeah, but I'd say like, especially for this, I mean, it's, it's, you try to chip away at it uh, a little bit every day. Cause it's, it's, it's a lot. I was like, is, is this the biggest part you've had in a play? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, mm -hmm. yeah. so I'm fascinated by the whole process. If you can share um, how you go about memorizing a um, learning the script. Yeah. Um, well, I, uh, there's, there's a number of different ways. Like a lot of people are either, um, uh, like auditory, like they have to hear the line or they have to, you know, like do something physical with it, like write it down. Like some people can just, um, uh, um, kind of depends. I'm a, with a play of this magnitude and kind of like being a one man show, I'm trying to, I kind of have a foot in both worlds here. Like, um, I listen to the lines as I'm like driving around. I was like, um, you know, at, at, my uh when i have a free moment like um you know also like write them down um just uh making sure you know like speaking out loud sometimes that's how it is i was like oh, that's I, I would say that's the biggest thing i was like if i just read it inside my brain nothing really like um uh kind of cements itself so i have to like speak it out loud i was like i think my roommate knows passages about as well as i do <laughs> um yeah just walking through the house so <laughs> So do you also have it, have you read into a, a, a cassette player or some sort of um, yep. thing that you listen to the whole time as well? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have a, a voice recorder. Um, Doug was kind enough to uh, uh, record some as well. So now I have it on like two different mediums. So I have it on my phone and also this uh, uh, portable recorder that I carry around. Um, yeah, just with a play of this magnitude, I was like, it's kind of that um, almost subliminal 
kind of thing. Like you just learn it as you. <laughs> well, what's as you a, sh it. a shame that's such a short run. You know, in other words, you're spending so much time and effort into it, and you only have six performances, hoping we have good weather. And that's probably almost upsetting. You know, that if you put so much time into it, it's almost too bad we don't have a longer run. You know, that just you do it and then it's gone after two week two weekends. Uh, yeah, it's but it, it's kind of the nature of theater. I, I kind of got that. I was like some of the um, <laughs> I've been in some productions that, um, you know, I, I've enjoyed every production that I've been in. But I was like, sometimes you're in a five week run. That <laughs> I was like, you know, you're just like, Ugh. I was like, we have this many more weekend weeks right. of this. I was like, um, and then sometimes you have like a, you know, a uh, 10 minute scene or like uh, one act that you're in like one night. And, you know, it's, it's the kind of the magic and the drive of theater where sometimes you're like, Oh my gosh, I wish I would wish we could, you know, take that one act and do that every week for the next like two months. And, you know, you have a fully produced like five week run. And sometimes you're like, Oh, I was like, this is, you know, this, this could be over like a, you know, holiday weekend. type. So, thing. so like a Montford thing, or most of them are like five weeks, it seems, you know, <laughs> Yeah. Well, Montford's a little different because I was like, you know, they're like big summer sock there in outdoor theater. So they have to make sure that there's enough longevity within uh, their uh, season to make sure that people who are coming from out of town and the locals and the regulars have plenty of opportunities to see it, which is interesting for like um, Hart because this is the first show I've ever done with Hart or at Hart or at all um, in my acting uh, career. It's, it's, it's nice that they have like the intimate space where they can kind of do these even though smaller run shows, but like plays that, um, you know, uh, uh, fit for kind of a smaller, like limited run, I guess, rather than like big, you know, productions that involve like 20 people and, you know, multiple fights on different levels and, um, you know, all, all, all the fun things that you see at some of the other plays I've been in. <laughs> Doug, the same question in terms of both directing and also acting. Any suggestions you have or recommendations if folks want to memorize uh, dialogue? What do you tell them? Um, I mean, for for me, I like to write my lines out. Um, that's what works a lot for me. Um, I sometimes record lines. Um, I know for, I talked with Jared before about um, had I thought of it sooner, I would have recorded lines for him a long time ago for him to just have them to listen to because it, there, this, it is so much. I mean, and there's, you know, because it's just him, it's not like he has cue lines. I mean, he has actions that, you know, he can help memorize things, but, um, but he won't get those till now, like when we're in rehearsals. Um, so for, for me, um, I, I think writing them out, I think listening to them both really good. Um, there is a, a little trick that helps me sometimes. I don't know if it would help with learning a whole play like this, but it helps with, um, I know when I've had like monologues and things like that, and that's to, you write the whole you write the whole speech out the whole monologue out um and you can do this with any lines in a play and then you go back and you just write the first letter of each word and then you look at that set of lines and you see if you can you can memorize that um and that that has helped me before in the past when i've had trouble with like getting especially if you're trying to memorize stuff quickly if it's something where it's like i don't know we we added this new monologue you have to know for tomorrow um that helps a lot if you write it all out and then go back and just write the first letter of each word it'll 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 it for me at least it stays in my brain um doing that it gets gets it in there a lot quicker if folks want to see nocturne kind of give the um way uh, the dates if you would and then how to get tickets sure um so nocturne um is at park theater uh it opens on february 4th uh, at 7 30 p.m is opening night it'll run uh, that friday February 4th, that Saturday at 7.30 p.m., February 5th, and then that Sunday, February 6th at 2 p.m., and then as well as the, there's, uh, we have holdover slash no dates for the following weekend that we'll hopefully get to do as well, um, which is the 11th, 12th, and 13th. Um, that's a Friday and Saturday at 7.30 and a Sunday at 2 p.m. again. Um, and you can buy tickets um, by going to hearttheater.org, and that's H-A-R-T-T-H-E-A-T-R-E.org. Sorry, right. I had to think the, about that. The correct way, yeah, <laughs> theater with an L R. And yeah. um, I'll, I'll just mention that it's, if you go out to Waynesville, great theater to go to, great, a lot of great place to eat in, in the Waynesville area. And if you're going to see uh, something that Doug or, or Jared is involved in, you're in for a treat. And before I let you guys go, let me ask you, after this run, 
uh, upcoming plans, Jared, uh, after Nocturne? Do you have anything uh, scheduled yet? Um, a few things, uh, uh, for, for, for me, unfortunately, I, there's, um, uh, auditions are still going around. So, um, and callbacks for stuff, uh, happening around. Um, uh, yeah, there's, you, I, I can say that you will see me at other stages. Uh, uh, sadly, I can't divulge what yet, but, um, I, the, the next project I'm a, the next project I know for sure, I'm very excited for as well okay. as this. Uh, but I guess if we say we won't see you fighting on top of a car. No, I can I can tell you that was that, yeah that was a that was a one time thing. That's a yeah that that'll be a whole interview later on. Okay, was was like... a, when, when I, I don't know if you saw the show Doug, but what was the show again? The name of it, it was Action Movie the Play. Yeah, I just loved it, and and uh, that was quite for for magnetic to do a show with a whole bunch of people in it and a whole bunch of fight scenes. It's pretty cool, Jared. So. Kudos for you on that. It was... He had a chainsaw fight on top of the car. <laughs> it was like, that's the, it was wild and weird and a very fun piece. It uh, was. But just, uh, it... my knee is, uh, I think my knee has just finally recovered okay. from. But you, you knocked it out of the block on that one. That was just great. And uh, Doug, same thing too. Do we have anything in line for upcoming that you can share? Um, I am directing um, the play, The Frankenstein Rubrics. Oh, so that, uh, yeah at a magnetic theater in the fall. Um, that's by local playwright, David Popes. Um, we just had season auditions for the magnetic theater season um, this past uh, weekend. Uh, so I'm, I'm actually currently in the process of making my callback list um, and I'll have callbacks uh, sometime before the end of February. And then I'll have a cast a little bit after that, but um, that's, that's what I'm doing um, as far as what I've got coming up. <laughs> I always wondered too, is that the toughest thing for a director to have to you know, go through the auditioning process and then choosing the, the people in the play and, and not choosing the people, but then telling, you know, the other people don't get in the play. That must be tough. Um, yes. Um, I mean, it is. I mean, I this is sort of the, the first big kind of casting thing I've had to do since previously I did Gruesome, which I basically asked a couple of people I knew. Same with this show. And I, you know, I knew Jared and um, I, I, I knew he could do this. So, I, I you know, I was, I, I approached him directly. Um, so, so yes, I know, I believe magnetic, um, is probably going to have, um, that they themselves are probably going to be the ones to, to make the offers and send out the rejections. So, um, takes a little less pressure off me, but, um, but yeah, I, I think it is hard. I, 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 I've heard, um, directing professor in college say, you know, I think it was in college. I anyway, I've heard this line that says that 90% of directing is casting. Right. So, and I, and I, I kind of agree with that. And so it, it is kind of hard because you're, you know, you, you you see a lot of different people, a lot of really, really talented people, and you are just trying to figure out what works for the play. Do they work well together? Is, you know, and then you also got to consider the logistical things of just does their schedule leave them allow, even allow them to do the play. Um, so, you know, have, if it, you know, are they going to, if it, if they're going to uh, be missing too many rehearsals to be a part of it. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it is, it, it, it's a difficult, it's a little bit of a, a juggling act, I think. Um, but uh, uh, there's a there's I've, I've got a lot of good uh, people out there that I've seen, so I'm 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 excited to do callbacks and and see see uh, see some more. Great. Well, I'd like to thank uh, both you and um, Jared for being my guest on the special video edition of the um, Blainswell Show. I'd also like to thank um, Amy Prisnash, my producer, and look forward to having you join me at the regularly scheduled time Wednesdays at 9 a.m. here on WPVM 103.7. You can also see us online at WPVMFM.org and watch like you're doing now on WPVM's uh, Facebook page. So guys, uh, I'll be hopefully seeing you in the near future at this at Nocturne and a whole bunch of other things. Thanks, guys. If you just stay with me a second after we sign off.